This is the War Room Roundtable podcast, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant businessmen and women on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they've learned on the road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their successes into your life and business. The War Room Roundtable is brought to you by your hosts, Jason Miller, CEO of Strategic Advisor Board, and Philip Llanos, CEO of Own the Rhythm, and former podcast host for Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine. Thank you, and welcome to the War Room, Tia. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? We're having a great time. I, I, I can already tell before we even hit record. It was going to be a good time. And, uh, and, and with that said, my favorite question to kick things off is, do you come from a family of entrepreneurs? Um, not really. Uh, somewhat. I mean, um, my dad, he, he was a writer. So there was a lot of that entrepreneurial, you know, I, I fell right into that. I've been writing since I was in elementary school, you know, the elementary school newspaper and Um, There was a lot of that entrepreneurial thing where you had to um, come up with something creative and then workshop it and make it something that people are just going to be drawn to. And that really is the secret, I think, with a lot of entrepreneurial things that you come across in life. You know, you, you find your own passion and there's going to be people out there that are going to be interested in the same thing. And as the years have gone on, I've learned, you know, the secret in having people not want what you're selling is also key in the whole marketing concept and really bringing and finding your demographic, your target demographic and finding your successful product or story or whatever, whatever you're trying to bring to them. So it's very interesting, but yes. So kind of, it's a little bit of a, I had the I had the foundation laid for me. I just had to kind of figure out the rest of it through my own trial and error, and then uh, meeting amazing people along the way. So, well, that that was my next question: is at what point did it become real for you? Right, because it's one thing to see it growing up, this and that. When do you start first dabbling in that and, and making those kind of commitments? Um, what I think is funny is. I feel like I just woke up one day and I was in it. I, I came up with, well, tipsfromtia.com. I came up with that concept because I had a bunch of tips stuck in my brain. And, you know, like people know baseball stats. I know tips, how to get a stain out of this or how to fix that. And, you know, I was like, you know what? I better start writing this down just because I know I'm a fault, but I'm going to start forgetting this stuff. And the fact that, people other than my mom were reading it. Like really it was kind of one of those amazing light bulb moments. Like people really need this and they really like this. So uh, let's venture further into it. So I feel like I just kind of was in it one day and every little step that I made, of course, was the progress to get there. But, you know, when you're, when you're trying to build something, I don't know if you ever feel like, yes, I nailed it. Like I'm in it. This is what I, this is all that I wanted to do. And I'm so satisfied with it. I think as an entrepreneur, you're always striving to, you know, just build and create and and find that, that new element that is going to make it more relatable or touch more people or, you know, something along those lines where, you know, feeling that, that complete satisfaction that I've accomplished something yeah, you have those moments of I'm really doing what I set out to do, but I feel like I'm always striving to do something better with it. Okay. And, and did you go the traditional route of education or did you forego all that because you, you just knew your passion? Um, both. I, I was, I, well, let's just say I, I was studying something else and then I got into radio and radio was really a great outlet for me to um, be a responsible influencer, I guess is the way that I like to say it. Um, you know, the fact that I had a platform for people to uh, want to listen to me first off, but then um, respect and 
uh, admire what I was saying. That was that was actually very very cool, and I, I took that as a very important responsibility. You know, I I don't I don't like to just throw out flagrant things or um, you know voice my opinion. I try to give people an open mind and options and different things like that. So um, along the lines, I felt that that was more of an education than I could have gotten from any institution or anything like that. Like I, I'm all about, yeah, go to school, do your thing, but passion is really what's going to drive you. I mean, even when I started building tips from Tia, I don't know code, but I Googled how to do it to make sure that I was getting the precise things that I wanted. And even if it was not perfect, I still made it. It's, it's almost, I, I look at it like, um, you know, if you're baking cookies or something and it's your first time doing it and you've never baked before, but there's something good about those cookies. They might not look awesome, but because you made it, there, there's a little bit of that pride in there. And you're like, well, I did that. I accomplished that. And is that a path that I want to, do I want to learn to become a better baker? Or am I satisfied with the fact that I'll never go hungry? You know, it's, it's something along those lines. And um, it, I, I am one of those people. I like to be well versed in a lot of different things. Um, I've always looked at myself kind of like a jackie of all trades, you know, where it's, it's nice to know a little bit about something and then where my passion lies. That's really where I will dive in and I'll, I'll perform my own education and find the right people that can teach me. Got it. Okay. Uh, before I go any further, I want to turn it over to Jason. I'm sure he's got a question or an insight from that. Yeah. I, I love the idea of the jack of all trade and the master of none, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's what they used to, they, they use that term in the military all the time. You know, join the military, you can become the jack of all trades and the master of none, right? Uh, right. Lear learn your trade and then learn how to use duct tape and bailing wire and everything else along the way, right? So, exactly. Exactly. Um, I can MacGyver your house if you need me to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I grew up that way, though. I grew up that way on because I'm a farm kid, so I grew up, I grew up on the farm. And, you know, if it was broke between bailing wire, duct tape, and really bad welding... <laughs> right. but there was a you know? sense of pride you did it you could do right it. right and it maybe it was just enough to get through that season right but uh you know and business can be very much the same way right i mean i think people strive for too much perfection when they uh when they try to do things it's like not everything's gonna be perfect you know get it to the 98 percent or the 90 percent um and and just go go with it and then start putting band-aids on it on the way right so that's right. the whole jump off the cliff and build the wings on the way down right so uh <laughs> yes i'm kind of doing that but it is it's when you strive for that perfection also that that opens you up to more um critique and and people can be super critical out there and I, I, I want to build people up and in the process of me building myself and, and my, my business, um, you know, people can be cruel and I, I don't want to give them uh, that level of if I, if I'm just not up to par one day for them to, you know, basically cancel me because I, I didn't do it exactly the way I did it last time. You know, I, I like being organic in the way of um, tailoring it to what I need to tailor it to in, in that moment. Yeah. That's just, no, that's just exactly. being, being you, right? I mean, I, I think that, that comes back to being your authentic self, right? And Absolutely. you have to be your authentic self. And guess what? Just, just because you change to something else next week doesn't mean you're not authentic could just mean that you grew exactly and that's what the whole point of it is right yeah, Growing. right that's right there's a lot so of trolls out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> with tips yeah, for tia 
Go go ahead. You had something you were going to say. Oh, I was going to say that was that was uh, that reminded me of a story. Um, one time, I, I used I used to do a lot of uh, newsprint write articles for different things, and I was working for this one uh, newspaper outlet, and I I wrote for fashion as well as other things, and I did this whole story on uh, the emo culture and how how to present that look and. You know, it was it it was a fine article. Well, it ended up going viral, and uh, it was it was so funny that the little newspaper was like, "We have never had this many comments before in the history of this newspaper." And I started reading the comments, and this is where I learned: don't read the comments. Um, you know, with the negativity, like just just throw it out. You don't need that negativity in your life. But that so many people were like, "Tia." You know, this is wrong. You can't you can't just tell people to be like our style. And I remember one of the comments was uh, Tia needs to go back to the mall and die. And I, it, was so, <laughs> it was so cruel and yeah, so funny. Cool. And I was like, wow, people really get uh, juiced up about certain things, don't they? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that says a lot about themselves and, you know, the way they feel about life. And- I, that's how I always see it. Like you, you can you can take it personal, right? Because there's always that. But man, right. what does that say about them, right? That they feel like that's the thing to say publicly, and they would never dare say that in person. Most people, most people don't say things like that in person. It, just look at the way we speak to ourselves when we make a mistake, right? There's no way we would talk to somebody else outside of us that way, not unless we're ready for the consequences. But for ourselves, or as that person's really talking to themselves. Right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, but on that same vein, right. Being in the public eye, having your work be scrutinized, writing, right. A lot of business owners think about the idea of maybe writing a book one day or they dread doing content for any number of reasons. One of them being, you know, the time and resources it takes. And yet that's how you establish yourself in the world as an authority, things of that nature. Have you found any frameworks that, that make sense for you? as somebody who's constantly writing and doing things, do you find that it's just one of those things where you got to sit down and do it, make a writing word count goal or what, what do you usually do to approach your work as a whole? That's it's um, very interesting that you asked that way, because for me, um, I, I definitely work a lot different than I think a lot of writers do. I am not really an outline person that kind of hinders my, my growth in the story. So I am, I'm more of a sections person in my mind. I'll, I'll say, okay, this is my beginning. This is my middle. This is how I want to end it. And for me, the most important thing is how I want to end it because um, knowing where your destination is, is, is really how you find your direction. Um, when you think about it, like even with like GPS, you need to know where you're going to get those directions to begin with. So um, that's the easiest way for me. Now, I I will not set aside a specific time. I I like to kind of ruminate on the idea and figure out where I want the story to go. And then when it hits me, bam, I, I'm in, like, I, I tune everything out. Um, I can, I can write like a novel in two weeks, which, you know, is very surprising for people. Like that's not, it's not edited or anything like that, but I will have a complete story from beginning to end in two weeks for you to, to take a look at and tell me if you like it. Um, now when it comes to writing content and different things like that, um, a lot of times, um, the hardest part is doing the research. So I will make sure I'm, I'm very much into research. I love it. And you have to be, if you're going to be a writer, you have to love research. But um, I think that the research is probably the most taskful part of the whole job because you have to be the, the number one source in that field. And even if you know nothing about it, well, you got to take a, at least a 10 minute education to learn as much as you can possibly about that subject. And then you can fluently write on it as if you are a professional that is experienced in that field. So um, 
I, I think that I like to break it down into knowing in my mind which way I want the story to go. And then I get into the nitty gritty research because um, people, again, the trolls, they will fact check you if they have to. <laughs> it's very yeah. important. Well, I'm glad you brought all that up because the main, the, one of the other reasons I was going to ask that is to lead up to, I know that there's an emphasis in uh, busy work and busy life and, uh, and how you can manage that. And there are many schools of thought on whether or not there's work, work life balance that can even exist. And, uh, you know, it sounds like you yourself spend a lot of time doing that, but you also spend a lot of time researching uh, tips, tricks, you know, tips for Tia, right? Uh, yeah. uh, tips from uh, tips for Tia. Like there's, there's a, uh, there's an emphasis on helping people to establish some degree of boundary between being able to enjoy their life and not. And if anybody knows entrepreneurs, they know that most entrepreneurs, they live by the credo in order to live an extraordinary life. You have to contribute extraordinary effort and that may be disproportionate to relaxation so i'm just curious what, what kind of work have you have you put out that maybe we can reference and go look at or what kind of things can you share in relation to that today um well like with tips from tia i think that's the the whole goal of tips from tia has been to take an individual who is working, family oriented, um, you know, has the pets and, you know, the two plus children or however you want to say, um, we're stressed out. Like people are just stressed out in this world. And um, I am giving tips on easy everyday things that, that complicate life, that these little things that can be the straw that breaks the camel's back to sound a little cliche, but um removing that from people, you know, uh, I, I want my, my site to be like a trusted source where somebody can say, Oh crap, this happened. You know what? Go check out tips from Dia and see if there's, there's a solution there. Um, I, I enjoy being able to provide that solution. Like one, here's a great example. One time I was, um, I wrote an article on sugar rush, you know, for, for little kids having a sugar rush. And, Honestly, the best way to combat a sugar rush for a child is give them a glass of milk. You've heard cookies and milk. Well, there's actually a science behind that. The sugar that's in the milk can actually dilute the sugar that's in the cookies. So you give them milk and that will reduce that sugar rush that will cause them to have, you know, just a hyperactive moment. And, um, you know, I threw that out there and I got the the nicest letter back from this woman in the UK. And she was like, my daughter is three years old. I have not been able to take her to a birthday party or a family function because she has these hyper breakdowns basically and ends up in a temper tantrum. And then by the time I get her out of the party, she's passing out in the car and then she's up all night. She said, I tried that simple tip and it changed my life. She says, I cannot believe how simple that tip was and it worked. And that's, that's what I love to do. I love to help. And it is simple. It's, it's something that, you know, we hear it all the time, cookies and milk, but um, to know that it actually has purpose, you know, people, they forget. And I'm just bringing it back to light. Right. It's like, uh, it's like steak and potatoes. Uh, there's a reason for that too. There's uh, beans and rice, I think is another one I've heard are actually a complete protein together, things of that nature. I, I have heard of those things. Uh, so now that you've broken that down, we've got a sort of a glimpse of what it is your work is doing. What is your current like goal that the, that the people who are listening should know about that maybe they can support and, uh, and visit your site or what have you? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, um, Thank you for asking. Um, I right now I am planning on revamping the whole site, uh, bringing it back, uh, bringing it up to the modern day. Um, you know, this, this site has been up for over ten years, so you know it's like a bee's knees when it first started. But now, you know, it's getting dated, and um, there's so much that needs to really be kind of, I guess, cataloged and everything like that. So we're doing a whole revamp and. I am always looking for uh, writers if they want to if they want to share content. I'm always looking for sponsors that want to you know um, make sure that they they get their you know link out there for everybody to see. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, you know, basically what I, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing uh, in the future here is writing a tips book that I can get out to the public, you know, um, and then down the line, I, I'm really hoping that we will be able to, you know, kind of be like the, the Martha Stewart of tips. That's really what I want to, us to become, the Martha Stewart of tips where, you know, you, you can really rely on us and then you can use tips from Tia's spatula to help you cook your meal or something like that, you know? So that's, that's where we're striving to get to. I see your lifestyle brand uh, in the wake. I, I, I see it. You want it to be a part of people's lives uh, as a, as a yeah. reference, a resource material. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I only have two other questions left, but before I dive into that, I want to check in with Jason, just making sure I didn't trample over the entire episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course not. Of course not. I, you know, I, I love the idea of, I love the idea of tips with Tia. I think it's really cool because, you know, if you, you Google something, right? you get like 25 different answers, right? I go through this with my kids, all the time, my oldest son all the time, right? I'll tell him something and he goes on Google and he goes, actually, dad, that's incorrect. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, let's scroll up the page. Okay, so here it says this. Oh, now, oh, look here, it says this now. So what's right, son? dad or these four things right so you know and that's the dangerous part about some of that so to have information all kind of calculated in one place is really a great idea and you know well obviously it's a great idea you've been doing it for 10 years so you must have figured something out <laughs> thank you yes and, and exactly what you said that is like the biggest point is I wanted a trusted source because everybody Googles and we, we've all done it um, where, again, I'm a researcher. So I am going to the next page and I'm scrolling down and I'm, I'm looking for the actual answer where most people, they don't have time to do that. So that's why I wanted to develop this trusted source. And you should be happy to know, in most cases, we test all the tips. Like if somebody sends us a tip and they say, hey, this works, and it doesn't, we let you know that too. We're not going to just put out false information. It's, it's so important where it, it, we're going to do the trial and error for you to make sure that it's going to work. Like um, it was just last week, somebody had told me if you use ketchup on a burnt pan, it will take all the, the, the burn away. It'll take all the singe and take that and just clean the pan. But you got to put it on for like 30 minutes, whatever. Um, it doesn't work. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I spent the time and it's a smelly job and, you know, like nobody wants to have to use that if they don't have to, but um, it didn't work. And I'm not going to let people do that. But uh, another thing with ketchup is it, it can clean brass. Well, I tried that. It absolutely cleans brass and it does a beautiful job. So like, if you want to clean brass, get yourself a bottle of ketchup, bam, it's going to work. If you want to clean your pan, don't do it. It's not going to work. <laughs> well, any substance in a pan with a wire brush will work. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be effortless. So. Right. <laughs> there, there, was no, there was a lot of effort in there. Oh, that's that's funny. funny. Yeah. No, I, I, this is all great. And people can ask, oh, where'd you get that tip from? Tips from Tia. You know, <laughs> so I get it. I see. I picked up what you put down. And with that said, if you could go back to the earliest stages of your journey where you were just finding yourself surrounded by all that, but had no idea what lied in store for you where you are now, right? Uh, actually having your work verified, like people have seen what you do, you, you're getting commissions and what have you. People are asking you to write articles or this or that. When you could, when it was only just a dream, right? What would you say to yourself, knowing what you know now about where you are and what you're doing and where you're going to that person who was just dreaming and wondering, well, can I do this? Yeah. Um, don't doubt yourself. Never doubt yourself. Um, if, if you, you know, if you can see it and you can believe it, it can happen. 
I truly believe that. And um, also consistency. Consistency is key. Um, just when you when you have the most amount of doubt within yourself, you're you're trying so hard and you see no no movement. Um, you feel like you're almost spinning, but you have put everything into this passion of yours. Do not give up because you're about to make a big turn that is going to change everything. And it's going to be better than you can possibly imagine. So, you know, just don't doubt yourself. Just keep on going. Right on. And uh, with that said, if there's no objections, I'll dive into the uh, grand finale. Jason? Drum roll. Ah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there finally it is. There's the beat box. There's the beat box. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little jazzier than this. Uh, yeah. I thought we were all doing Christmas vacation. Together. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, so, no 20th Century Fox intro here. Um, so, the grand finale is essentially an exploration into all the infinite possibilities that could have been here today. But you specifically decided to choose one person. So if you could have invited anybody today, based on everything we just talked about, the highs, the lows, the interesting facts, you know, the work that you've done in that history itself, what would you say about inviting X person? Who would that be and why? That's a great question. And uh, I was really nervous at first, but uh, I would say Eleanor Roosevelt. Um, mm-hmm. Because what an inspiration in so many ways of just encouragement, encouraging quotes throughout history. I mean, she has a million of them. So um, I, I would love to have her as my little like cheerleader today. <laughs> uh, but also the, the knowledge that she has on things that we today probably have forgotten as society. Like I said, milk and cookies, you know, steak and potatoes, that kind of thing. Um, I'm sure she would have some awesome nuggets to pass on to me that I could write about today. I see that. I, I can see why like, if you connect that to sort of the work that you're doing as an ambition and how it can become a staple for people to know that like that was proven, right? It's uh, people hear it as a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. And here's the reason why. And that's why it's actually working. And it has now been tested and proven. And somebody needs to test it. You're doing journalism is really what you're doing. You, you've got a hypothesis. You've you've sourced it. You've put the pedal to the metal. You've proven whether or not it works, right? You fact-checked it, as they say. And you're curating something in an age of, of overwhelming information. So you are impacting people every day, even if it's whether or not steak and potatoes is a real choice to make. You know, people are busy, parents especially. There's no way they have time to sit there and research recipes and this and that, but you helping them, that saves them time, which saves them money, which et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those are my closing thoughts. Thank you for the work that you do. I'll hand it over to Jason to close us out. Not to mention she had to put up with Teddy. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Rough Rider there, right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> he, he can do a wicked beatbox though. Wicked. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, well hey, I, 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 I always like to say this, and and that is thanks for taking the time to be here. We all got the same amount of hours every week, and uh, you chose to spend a little bit of time in the war room with us, um, and and that's that's something special for us and our audience to get to, you know, hear your journey, hear what you've built, hear how you're helping people, and. Those are the kind of things that the world needs to hear. We need infinitely millions times more of these kinds of conversations, especially in the day day and age that we are of this, right? And (laughs) stuck in this. And you can't beat just, you know, being able to look people in the face and have a conversation. It's always better in person, but I mean, um, but at least this is, it's something, right? So, so thank you for being here. I'm glad you, you were able to come on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. It was my honor, actually. And uh, this is wonderful. Right on. Awesome. appreciate that. Cheers. Cheers.
Thanks for listening to the War Room Roundtable with your hosts, Jason Miller and Philip Lanos. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates. And always remember, if you can dream it and believe it, then you can go achieve it. We'll see you in the next episode.